Well, that really was a long way to the first component, wasn't it? But it was worth it. It's so important to understand what you're doing and with what you're working. So let's start with the first component then. I told you that React.js is all about building UIs and, well, components. So how do we build such components? It all starts by importing React. We're using ES6 import syntax for that. Importing it from React, that's the package name. And import something from React DOM. Now I'm getting some IDE errors here because my IDE still thinks I'm writing ES6 code. So just yeah, thank you. Change this. No, I have Babel set up on my own. All the IDE magic here. Well, so pull in something from React DOM and the something is the render method, which allows me to render my component later on to the DOM. So with that, I got all the required dependencies. Now it's time to create a component. And well, how do you do it? It's actually really simple. You create a new class with this ES6 class keyword. Name it whatever you want to name it. I'm going to name mine app since it's my first component, my root component kind of. And then this is important. It has to extend the base component in the React package. So React component. With that, boom, you get a new component, but not a very useful one right now. Components have a lot of built-in methods you can use, and I will come back to them in a later video when I talk about the component lifecycle. A very important method you need to have if you want to have your component do anything, which you can see on the screen, is the render method. This method is called by React.js whenever React.js thinks it needs to render the component. And I'll come back to when it thinks it needs to render a component in a later video. Basically, it has a right way of thinking, so it will re-render it when it's necessary. And then you define what it has to do when rendering this component. Now, you might have noticed that until now, we have no place where we store the HTML code. And a component, of course, is not only about JavaScript, it's also about HTML code, right? It's about elements which get added to the DOM, a div, a button, something like that. Now, here is where React.js can make you feel uncomfortable if you're totally new to it and are used to the clear separation of HTML and JavaScript. This render method needs to return something and it needs to return what should be rendered. I'll enclose it in parentheses. And then here is what I want to have rendered. A div. And yes, switch to JSX. X, thank you. A div. And let's say then something like a h1 tag where we say hello. Well, that is strange. HTML code in a JavaScript file. Well, I'm actually not kidding you. That is JSX as the creators of uh, React named it. It's JavaScript mixed with XML or HTML here. And while it looks like we're writing HTML code, well, behind the scenes, this will be transferred to JavaScript code, creating the appropriate elements. So you are probably aware that you can create an element in plain vanilla JavaScript with something like document create element, and then you could say a div and so on. And that is what's happening here in the background. But that of course is a much more convenient way to write it. So we write the code, which we want to have on our page in a JavaScript file and it's perfectly fine to do so. So that would be the very simple first component. It only displays hello and I'll style this a little bit more soon. But for now, let's display it in the application. And that leads us to the next question. How do I render this app? It's nice that we have it, but thankfully React.js is not going to take our page and replace everything with that HTML code. That would be a rather bad behavior. Instead, I'll go back to my index.html file and I'll set up a hook where I want to render this. It'll be a simple div with an ID of your choice. I'm using app here. And I will tell React.js to basically 
render my component in this place. Here we already have the point I was talking about in my first video in the series. React.js doesn't necessarily create a single page application. You can tell it where to render individual components in your view. You don't have to control your complete view with React.js. Though that's what I'll do in this series and what you will see in a lot of React.js applications. You don't have to do it. You can just build single widgets or components which you dump into your normal view. And that is totally fine and that actually is what React.js was created for in the beginning. So back in the index.js file we have to tell React that we want to render it in this divs place. I will call the render method from React DOM for that. And then I first tell it to what to render. That is my app and I define it like an HTML tag. If you're coming from Angular 2, that looks familiar. That is like you use the selectors in HTML uh, in Angular 2. App here is of course the name of my class and then I just enclose it in opening and closing tags. Whoops. That's the first argument of the render method. The second argument is the place where I want to render it. The place shall be window.document and then get by ID, get element by, oops, by ID. And then the ID was app. With that, it should render it there, though I'm getting an error, let's see. Yeah, that's a rather annoying error. Here, module, that should be module. So restart the Webpack process here. Didn't throw this error in the setup video, of course, because, well, there we didn't use React. Now it should work. And we see hello here. So sorry about this error, really annoying. But with that, we got our first working component. And before I finish this video, I want to point out an important thing about this component or about React in general. In this return function here, you can only return one element. Now you might say we're returning two. Yes, nested elements, that's fine. But only one root element. So here a div. It wouldn't work if I have a sibling div next to it. That my IDE already doesn't like it. That will not work because here only one element may be returned. And also before I leave, I want to add some styling. So I'll head over to getbootstrap.com to get the default bootstrap styling so that everything looks a bit nicer without me having to write quite a lot of code. And I will import it here in my index file at the end of the head section like that. And with that, I'll go back to my index.js file and use my bootstrap styles here. Now, you might think that we use class like we do, but keep in mind, it looks like HTML code here, but it isn't a real HTML code. It's JavaScript, it just looks nicer, some, 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 uh, some tactical sugar. Therefore, we have to use class name here, not class. And that's just something you have to keep in mind. Class name is it here. If you're lucky, you have an IDE which helps you like I do. Otherwise, that's really just something to memorize. So this will get the container class. Then I'll add a row. Thankfully, Emmet, my plugin, also knows I'm in JSX here. And then I'll just provide some uh, columns here. So that's all just some bootstrap stuff to make it look nice, basically, like so. And then I uh, grab my hello element here again, save this, it will automatically reload. And if you go back to your application, you will see the restart thing without having to refresh the browser. That's the great thing about Webpack server here. It automatically reloads everything. And if you've got hot reloads, uh, hot module loading working, then it even does this without reloading the page automatically. It just changes the page in the background. So with that, we built our first component. You learned that this render method is very important, that you may only have one root element in here that you then tell React where to render this component in your view and how it gets rendered there. And with that, I think we're well prepared to move on to the next lecture where I'll have a look at multiple components working together. See you there.